Capital Projects meeting to order, and the time is 8.32 a.m. Uh, Ms. Dina, can you do roll call? Ana Jimenez? Here. Gabby Canales? Here. Glenn Martin? Here. Mike Reed? Present. Matt Walbright? Safety briefing item two. Good morning. Um, for the safety briefing, if we have a, an emergency, we will exit uh, to our left, uh, the board of directors and myself. Um, John Esparza is in the audience. He'll make sure that everybody's uh, exit properly in the board of directors room. Uh, during the emergency, uh, please uh, do not use the elevator. Uh, do not return unless the all clear has been given and board of directors will report to the clock tower adjacent to the transfer station. I'll make sure that everybody's accounted for and Mr. Esparza will make sure that everybody exits properly. And if we have to shelter in place, we will shelter in the west side stairwell. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, item three, receipt of conflict of interest affidavit. Madam Chairwoman, we have not received any in person or online. Item four, opportunity for public comment. Anybody sign up for public comment? Madam Chairwoman, we have not received any online or in person. Okay. Moving on to item five, discussion and possible action to approve the operations and capital projects committee meeting minutes for July 28, 2021. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Thank you, Director Reeves. Second. Thank you, Director Martin. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, item six, discussion and possible action to recommend the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer or designee to issue an invitation for bids for unleaded fuel supply. Okay. Dina. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All right. The board priority, priority for this item is public image and transparency. For the unleaded fuel, we have 36 maintenance, security, supervisor, and other support vehicles that utilize unleaded fuel. We also have three cutaway vans that are utilized by the city of Port Aransas. And we have the 29 new R boxes that were delivered in 2021. We also have an additional 13 that are anticipated to be delivered at the beginning of 2022 and nine more by the end of 2022. And this is uh, all pending manufacturing issues that are going on right now. <coughs> The current contract approved by the board on November 7th, 2018 was a two-year base contract, a one-year option with board approval. Unleaded fuel supply agreement helps ensure product availability, a more predictable pricing, and it utilizes the oil pricing information service, which is pretty much an industry standard uh, marketing index for oil. And it, the pricing, including this, will have discounts or markups, and will be, the price will be marked per site delivery date. The IFB will be issued as a two-year base contract, one-year option following board approval. Staff will collaborate with the successful bidder to pursue DBE participation. Total expenditures will be determined by consumption and by OPIS. The funds are accounted for in the board approved annual operating budgets. So the estimated consumption costs, again, they're based on the expected delivery of the 13 R box and the nine more by the end of 2022. And it's also, the this uh, data here is also affected by the demand for Beeline and uh, any additional services that the board authorizes us to put out. So our estimated annual usage in gallons for 2022 is 218,108 at an estimated cost of $499,466. And in 2023, we're anticipating using 394,868 gallons at a cost of $904,247. And this is based off of a uh, $2.29 uh, uh, $2 per gallon, which is what we use for our 2022 budget estimates. And the finance department helps put this together while, while looking at some short and long range forecasts. So with that, staff requests that the Operations and Capital Projects Committee recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer or designee to approve issuing invitation for bid for unleaded fuel supply. With that, take any questions. Madam Chair, I have a few questions. Yes, sir, go 
Derek, um, I perfectly understand what you guys are dealing with from my day job as well. We're looking at that all the time. And so I see that this is based on gallons uh, and miles. Is, is it also a time lock as well? Does it have a play in there like two years or three years if I missed that? It's, a, it's gonna be a two year agreement with the one year, year with the one year option following board approval. Okay, thank you. Um, why such a disparity between 2022 and 2023 in the miles? Is that COVID or? No, right now we're, we have a CNG fleet of our box. So as they transition away from the compressed natural gas to an unleaded fuel, you're gonna see less expenditure on the CNG side and our unleaded usage will, will increase as part of that. So right now we only seven or eight of those 29 new ones we got in are actually in service. By the end of the year, all 29 will, will be in service. And then as we get the next batch of the 13, then by then, basically starting 2023, all of the paratransit will be on unleaded, and then part of the fixed route will be on unleaded fuel, part of the small fixed routes that utilize the cutaway vans. So you're seeing the transition from compressed natural gas to unleaded. A recommendation for the board of directors to authorize the chief executive officer or designee to issue an invitation for bid for unleaded fuel supply. So moved. Thank you, Director Reeves. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Director Bernardo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Moving on to item seven, discussion and possible action to recommend the board of directors authorize the chief executive officer or designee to enter into negotiations for general architecture services with Janak Architects, Turner Ramirez Architects, Able City LLC, and WKMC Architects Inc. as architects of record. And B, architectural design services with Janak Architects for the Porter's transfer station renovation project. And item C, architecture design services with Turner Ramirez Architects for the Del Mar College South Campus bus stops, quantity two. Good morning, Jill. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Sharon Montes, Managing Director of Capital Programs and Customer Services. This aligns with the board priority for facilities and safety and security. Some background. The CCRTA has used various architectural firms over the years to design various buildings and transfer stations. And this practice involved hiring one architectural firm for each project. This project though typically ranged from four to six months to hire the architect. So in doing a review for efficiencies, we concluded and, and spoke with other agencies that a pool of architectural firms would actually expedite the overall project schedule. Therefore, it is the CCRTA's intent to develop a pool of qualified firms to provide architectural services for various projects. Mm -hmm. The assignment of firms to specific projects is at the sole discretion of the CCRTA. While CCRTA desires to use all firms in the qualified pool it develops, firms are not guaranteed minimum work. They may not be assigned to any future project if deemed in CCRTA's best interest. The purpose of having architects of record serves the following objectives. It assists with the design of shovel-ready projects in, in anticipation of additional grant funding it expedites unforeseen work assignments that may pop up, and it supports CCRTA staff with projects that might run parallel and may need to be fast-tracked. The structure of the term of the contract will be a fixed three-year contract with one two-year option. The option year will be brought back to the board for approval. Currently, two major projects will require architectural design services. The Newport Air Station, uh, estimated at $1,143,227 for construction. And then the two bus stops at the new Delmar College South Campus. Estimated construction costs about 2110848 
Potential projects, though, in the future could include park and ride projects, electric charging station projects, uh, and Southside transfer station improvements. So a request for qualifications was issued on June 24th, uh, and they were received on August 5th. Five proposals were received, and the following was the criteria that was used to evaluate the proposals. Firm experience, 20 points. Team experience, 20 points. Capacity and capability, 20 points. Management and organizational approach, 10 points. Responsiveness to agency needs, <coughs> excuse me, 10 points. Performance standards, 10 points. Quality control program, five points, and DBE was five points. This is a federal project. <coughs> so here, this table highlights the scores for each firm. Danac rated the highest at 94.6. Turner Ramirez, 83.2. Abel City, 79.75. WKMC, 71.2. And Fresh, 63.6. After assessing each of the five firms, four of the five firms are being recommended for the pool. Danac Architects, Turner Ramirez, Abel City out of San Antonio, and WKMC out of Corpus. So Danac's team brings over 30 years of experience in municipal design projects, including several recent transfer stations and bus stops, coupled with an extensive knowledge of architecture in the coastal bend. Their headquarters is located in downtown, the next firm has worked under this name for 33 years. The firm has 20 employees and three offices. Turner Ramirez is a full service, 100% minority owned architectural firm with 16 employees, established in 1958 by the late Jack Rice Turner, so over 63 years ago. <coughs> in 2008, Philip Ramirez, after an 11-year tenure with Mr. Turner, was named principal partner. The firm has built in, been involved in about uh, 330 million projects over the last 10 years. Able City and its predecessor company have been working on transit facility designs for 40 years. Now, Able City is out of San Antonio. The firm has 27 staff members. Uh, the firm's principal is Mario A. Pena. He's a registered architect with the state of Texas and Florida, and he has over 20 years of experience. The firm has been doing business under the present name for four years. WKMC, the firm owners include Bill T. Wilson and William S. McCord, both architects. The firm has worked under the present name for 27 years. The firm is a local company and has 13 employees. Within the board document, I list the various projects each firm uh, designed. Task order recommendations. The NAC architects are being recommended for design services for the Port Airs Transfer Station Renovation Project. The NAC architect has completed two multimodal transfer stations, one for the CCRTA and one for the City of South Padre Island, along with Brownsville Metro Eastside Transfer Station. Turner Ramirez architects are being recommended for Del Mar South Campus bus stop. Currently, Turner Ramirez are the design team for the Del Mar College South Campus, which will facilitate the overall construction and col collaboration for the CCRTA's two new bus stops. DBE, all architectural firms have indicated they will strive to meet the DBE goal of 5%. The estimated fees for architectural services are based on a percentage of the total construction cost, and typically those fees will range from 8% to 11%. Therefore, here we go. Staff recommends that the Operations and Capital Projects Committee recommend the Board of Directors authorize the CEO or designate to enter into negotiations for A, general architectural services with DENAC Architects, Turner Ramirez Architects, Able City LLC, WKMC Architects as architects of record. B, 
Architectural Design Services, which enact architects for the Port Ayers Transfer Station Renovation Project, and C, Architectural Design Services with Turner Ramirez Architects for the Del Mar College bu South Campus Bus Stops, two of them. The initial agreement will cover the three years for the four firms. The two-year option will be presented to the Board of Directors for approval contingent upon a previous history of satisfactory performance. And that concludes my presentation, Madam Chair. Sharon? Yes, sir. <coughs> Probably one of the most thorough explained presentations that you've done for these types of projects. Um, we rarely see the background on each one at this, at this point and what specific projects are going to do. Yes, so thank you for taking the time to outline those for all of us because you've answered a lot of my initial questions on it. Oh, thank um, you, sir. The only thing I have left to ask is, especially with current times right now, yes. with, with uh, health in play and labor concerns and all that for different firms, um, having four is a benefit for that reason to move forward on the project. However, would there have been any cost savings by minimizing the four firms to two or one firm to do all those projects when you look at the scope of everything? I don't believe so because it's based on a percentage of construction, their fees. Yeah. So a lot depends on the, the construction price. So I don't see that changing um, at this point in time. Now, going forward, depending on how COVID changes things, who knows? Yeah. But currently, we use a percentage of construction. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions for Sharon? Uh, yeah, Sharon, on the uh, on the scoring system. Yes, sir. Is that strictly a objective score, or is there a I objective, can objective, objective? So. Uh, Based on that criteria that I listed, I think there were seven categories. There is a, we rate in groups, right? We have a panel. And so for this panel, it was the four managing directors and the director of planning. And each one of us scores individually. So it's done separately. So in that respect, it's objective because each individual uh, reviews it from their own perspective. Then after we've all scored them, we come together as a group, we send our scores to procurement, they tally everything, and then we meet to go over them. So each individual as part of the group scores individually. And it should be a blind scoring. Is it a blind scoring? So you don't, you're not aware of the firms, you're just looking at the content of the RFQ? When you're scoring, or do you know this is Janak? We do, we do know that. If I may, uh, I was part of the evaluation, and we have uh, been in other situations where uh, Ms. Sharon is in charge of this, but she didn't tell us, you know, how to grade them, how to rank them. Uh, but what we've done now is that if you see Janak and uh, the one way in the, on the bottom, they're about 30 points apart. Does that mean they're 30 points apart because they're not that good? No. Um, so when we rate them now is we go, the max, let's say it's 20. So we do our best one, whoever I feel is the, the best, I'll do 20. Then the second one might be 16 or 17 to separate them apart. And then the third one and the fourth one, we, we try to do that. Uh, remember last time Janek got a, a particular uh, contract that he was like uh, half a point uh, apart from the second place. So we want to make sure that, you know, that doesn't happen. So we, we uh, actually scored three or four points apart from number one, two, three, and four. And again, the last one, it doesn't mean that he is 30 points apart and he's not that great of an architect, it's just that how the ranking came in. So we want to make sure that we, we separate them and not overlap them uh, and, and, and for them to be that close. Any further questions? Yeah, thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, Madam Chair, this is Dan from Remote. Uh, can I ask a question? Of course, Dan. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Sharon, uh, is there an escalation clause in there? Uh, this is a two- or three-year contract. Is there a cap on the escalation of uh, hourly rates? No, sir, but we do have our procurement schedule guidelines where we have percentages for various uh, cost levels. <clears throat> and so in that respect, we already have defined percentages. Now, if construction increases, that's, that's a different story, but our fees are locked in based on construction. Typically, if we're gonna budget for any construction costs going, going forward, and no different than we do now with these projects, there's a contingency set aside. Oh, fantastic, you answered my question, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Is there a recommendation for the Board of Directors to authorize the CEO or does it need to enter into negotiations for the General Architectural Services with Genac Architects, Turner Garmitas Architects, Able City LLC, and WKMC Architects as architects of record and Architectural Design Services with Genac Engineering for the Port Airs Transportation Renovation Project and Architectural Design Services with Turner Garmitas Architects for the Delmar College South Campus bus stop? Is there a motion? I'll move. Second. Thank you, Director Reed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Sharon, for the very thorough presentation. <laughs> Item eight, committee chair report. There's no new business. Everybody have anything to contribute? Any anybody want to say anything? I just want to say this is my final committee meeting uh, for my tenure with the RTA. Uh, I'll save some more parting words for next week's board meeting, but I want to thank staff uh, and everybody that's on this committee for the opportunity. It's a lot of great memories. We've been through a lot together, many of you, and some of you are just coming on board. I, I welcome you to do this and continue on, but uh, we'll further more next week, but thank you. Appreciate it. Much, Director Reed. I've learned a lot from you, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Anna. No pressure, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always got to follow this oration by Mike. <laughs> I want to reiterate I've enjoyed working with you folks. All my questions have always been answered in a timely manner, and we're going to go figure out something else. <laughs> I'll let you go first next week, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn, it has been a pleasure also serving with you. We have learned so much from you, and thank you for all the laughs and always a kind smile. It's it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. It is 8.56 a.m. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Or there's a taco party in the back. We're going to go back there now. <laughs> Staff, thank you for this wonderful plaque. Thank you. Very nice.